This is your family history. Use your colors, your designs, your layouts. Your videos should reflect you and your family. Your videos shouldn't look like mine and they shouldn't look like somebody else's. They are unique to your family. These have been ideas, not rules, maybe not even guidelines, just ideas on how to make these videos. I hope that as you watch some of these videos, ideas of topics that you should include have come to your mind. I don't touch on family trips and birthdays and, and common items that are usually listed when writing family history. All of those are great as well. I just tried to come up with some other ideas. And I have picked items that were small, that would not take a huge amount of time to make these videos and hopefully like I said spark some memories in your own family. Now for privacy reasons I have not included names, dates, locations, addresses and photos of family members that are living. Please add those details that are missing from these videos for privacy. But Tell who it is that this is about. Who is involved? Where was the house in Utah? What school did the, my daughter go to? And where did we live? Where did we travel? All that should be included in your videos because they will be private and only shared with your family. These tapes are not perfect and Yours don't need to be either. The family will love and enjoy hearing memories that they may have forgotten. For each video in this A to Z blog challenge, I did the following. I made a PowerPoint which included the photos, pictures, graphics of a family memory. I added a recording to each slide, adding the description of those memories or the items that we're recording. This meant people were hearing a story rather than reading it. I didn't want the recording icon to appear in my video, so I clicked on the recording icon, clicked on the Auto Tools playback tab that now appeared on the ribbon. In the Auto Options section of that tab, which is shown in the top right of the slide, I click the box beside the Hide During Show. That's where the arrow is pointing. The arrow is also pointing beside a drop down arrow that states On Click. When you click on the drop down arrow, automatically appears, and that's the option that we want. We want the, vid the recording to automatically start when that slide appears or when the video starts. I also needed to indicate the transition between this slide and the next slide if there was more than one slide in the video. The transition needed to happen after the recording was done. So to do that, the first thing I needed to do was click on the recording icon if it wasn't already selected. And then I moved my mouse to the end of the box. This is shown by the arrow in the middle diagram on the right hand side of this slide. When you move your mouse to that end of that box, it shows you how long the recording is. I then went to the transition tab in the timing section shown in the bottom right. I clicked on the up arrow to increase the time to just a little bit more than the recording time. In this option, the example, the recording time was 1 minute 15 seconds and a little bit more. I then put the timing for 1 minute 16 seconds. It gives a little bit of a breath between when the recording ends and going on to the next slide. Once all that work has been done, I saved it as a MP4. Now as I've been working on this, of course I've been saving it as a PowerPoint file all along. Once it is an MP4 file, then I can upload it to my YouTube channel. 
when you get there on your YouTube, make sure that you save it into the appropriate playlist. The A to Z blog challenge was also and became a vlog challenge as I made each of these into a video. I also had to write a blog post, but when you're doing this, you may or may not need to have a blog post. You might want to announce it somehow to your family that there's a new video. If they follow your channel, they will get that prompt in their list in YouTube, but only in YouTube. 